I actually agree with Skeletor on something. Holy cow. Stop hiding behind your colors. I agree 100%. <laughs> Me and Skeletor don't agree on much, but he did a video the other day, it was a live session, where he was talking about people hiding behind their colors, and I could not agree more. I suggest going over there, check out the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Made a lot of good points during that video. One of them points were the fact of how people join clubs. And we all know clubs have a pack mentality. That's where the wolf pack came in, where you have to fight everybody if you get into it. But when they join these clubs, we used to call it patch power. They get their chest pumped up. And they think they can take on the world because they have a bunch of guys that are now backing them. And I do agree with Skeletor. A lot of time, the guys that are in the club look at them stupid when they're starting all kinds of crap. This happens especially when they're brand new in their patch. They get all crazy. Especially if they're a dominant, they start going after the supporter club saying, hey, you know what, I'm the top of the food chain, that kind of stuff. What people need to understand is you're a man before anything. And it is a sad state of affairs when you do have these type of people running around, causing all kinds of havoc, and making the club look bad. I got to, it, it makes a club look bad when you got a guy going out there using the patch because he knows he's going to have backup. And I always heard, and I know, you got to love, you don't have to like your brother, you got to love him. So when there's a situation out in public, of course, they're going to back him because of the patch that he's wearing. Hopefully in private is where he gets a dotted eye or something like that. But these are the guys, and I'm sorry to say, man, I'm sorry to say, the ones that act like this are the ones that are in high school, got thrown in lockers or swirlies in the toilet, something like that. And this gives them an outlet to really be a jerk. It's funny, sometimes you'll talk to people and the first thing they do is bring up their club name. Well, I'm this and I'm that. Like it makes them right in a debate or discussion just because they're part of that club. But they want to make sure that you know that. Like it's going to change your direction on how you approach an issue. And sadly, that kind of stuff does work on weak-minded people. See, the problem with people is they see not the man, but they see what he's wearing, the patch. And people really use that to their advantage. One thing I always found funny was you really don't see 30-year members, 40-year members, 50-year members. That's why it's such an honor to be able to talk to them guys that have been in a club that long. So what does that have to do with what I'm talking about? Well, what it has to do with is most of the time, those same people that use their patch against others, usually quit. They're usually done within a couple years. So then you got to look back on it and say, what the hell, man? 
I thought you were gun ho this, this, and that. It's funny when you you catch a guy like that in, say, a bar or a run years later after the incident where he used that patch against you. The attitude totally changes when they get that patch off. And one thing I'm surprised about clubs is they don't address this kind of stuff. Especially within the biker community. Because one thing's for sure. Clubs might be popular on the internet, but they sure the hell ain't popular on the street. And that's not bashing them. I'm just, that is the general consensus on the street. Many people look at clubs a lot different than they used to. So when you have a club member talking crap to some independent, knowing there's nothing he can do because you got 10 guys behind you, he's going to have a different outlook on clubs. And clubs need all the support they can get right now. But because of one guy that was hiding behind his patch got out of check with somebody else, that guy is going to go around telling 10 friends, then 10, you know how it goes. It's like a steam barrel of, yeah, I had this encounter with this club, they're jackasses. And a club starts getting a bad name because one guy who wants to be hide behind his patch wants to show the length of his Johnson. And that's really what it is, is they want to show the length of their Johnson to other people. Yes, it's an accomplishment getting your patch. But at the same time, you're still a man. Be a human being. Don't be a dick. So I'm actually really glad that Skeletor brought up this business of hiding behind a patch. Because it is a problem. It's a big problem. And I don't don't see how you call yourself a man if you want to use your club to go after someone. That's why there's all the shootings. That's why there's all this crap. Throw down like a man. Fist the cuffs, man. Because you don't get any respect from anybody when you use your club brothers, especially ones that look at you stupid, for getting them in that situation in the first place. It don't make you look good. It don't make you look tough. What it does make you look like is somebody that's weak. Because if you need others to back your play and you can't stand on your own, that's the very definition of being weak. I'm I'm sorry to say it. A lot of people think it. That's why I believe the independent biker really represents what the scene is all about. Because they stand on their own two feet. They handle their problems without needing the backup of somebody else. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand is the wolf packing. Everybody jumps in. Ten guys on one. What does that prove? I never seen that. And I never was able to figure it out. That doesn't make you a man. What that makes you is weak in a lot of people's eyes. One-on-one is the way things used to be handled, but no longer. Because people hide behind that patch. And it is funny, because you see a lot of people that puff their chest out they get into something that they shouldn't have been into and the next thing you know and this is what really pisses people off is they turn informant so you're out there 
puffing your chest, making everybody's life hell. But then when the piper comes calling and calls your card, you turn informant? What kind of crap is that? And how does that affect your club when you do it? Say, the one person that you were punking out because you knew had, you knew you had guys behind you, next thing he finds out, you ratted. It's not a good look on the club. Not uh, even, it's not a good look on you. What I think people need to understand is you do need to be a man. You need to solve your problems as a man. Have a sit down, whatever, just like Skeletor was talking about. Sit down, be a man. That is in short supply nowadays because people need other people to back their play. And it's not a good look. It just causes more haters and more problems for the club when that happens. A lot of people do ask about that all the time. Why the hell is this happen or that happen? Well, it's a very simple and easy answer. They ain't men because they can't back their own plays. They need others to back them up. That's where the strife is within the scene. That's why, or one of the reasons why, there's a low turnout for MCs. Because instead of getting respect, which that's the way they think they get it, they're actually losing respect. Because how can you respect someone who jumps you 10 to 1. You can't respect that. There is no respect when something like that goes down. People look at you like a bunch of bangers. And that's one of the reasons why maybe clubs need to say, hey, don't act like assholes because you're making us look stupid. This happens at rallies all the time. Yeah, it might not be reported in the news, but it does happen. It especially happens in a bar. You got guys in there. Next thing you know, a whole club comes in. The drinking gets going. And it might be a harmless thing that somebody says. And next thing you know, you got the big loud mouth with the patch making trouble for the whole club. And then next thing you know, you're rat packing or wolf packing one guy. And it might not even be an independent biker. What it does is make your community look down on you when something like that happens because we all know when a club's involved in something, it's newsworthy. So those are my thoughts on Skeletor's video. Again, go watch it, man. I, you know what? I really think he made a lot of good points. I'm man enough to say when I agree with something, I agree with it. Even though we might have a distaste for each other, it was a good video. Lots of good points in it. Go over there and watch it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Go over to my personal channel. That's where I do a lot more independent uh, biker-related stuff. A lot of fun stuff that this scene is supposed to be all about. I'm going to head on over and go to the Morning Hoot with Hollywood in China. Now, that's a fun show, man. Fun show that you get a bunch of laughs, uh, strip teases, the whole nine yards. So go over there. You to listen on the uh, Insane uh, Radio app, Insane Throttle Radio app. And you can listen on Discord to actually see us uh, video on uh, the show. Or InsaneVoltage.com.
You guys have a good one. Don't forget to pass us around. Follow the Insane Toronto Radio app and listen to the hottest modern rock on the planet. No commercials at all. Just art rock and roll, baby. Download the Insane Toronto Radio app for Android now on Google Play. Rock on.